I recently had a patient come to the hospital who was brought in by ambulance for confusion. He was altered and was really hard to wake up. And it turns out that it wasn't the patient who called 911, but it was other people who saw this guy lying on a park bench. So what's the deal with this guy? It turns out it was really warm outside that day, and this guy was covered in thick blankets. Additionally, this guy's temperature was a whopping 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So does a diagnosis come to anyone's mind at this point? This guy was in heat stroke. This diagnosis carries a mortality rate ranging from 21 to 63 percent. That's really high. Heat stroke is defined as a core body temperature greater than 40 degrees Celsius. That's greater than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It is also often accompanied with CNS dysfunction. What I'm talking about here is that the patient in heat stroke typically complain of weakness. If not, they're confused, irritable, lethargic, delirious. You get the point. With heat stroke, there's usually some sort of higher level or cognitive dysfunction. The last thing that's required for the diagnosis of heat stroke is the presence or exposure of a patient to a large heat load typically in the setting in where heat from the person can't be dissipated. In this case, our patient was covered in blankets, which probably limited his ability to let off some of that heat. Now let's take a step back and break this down further. There's two types of heat strokes. There's your classic heat stroke, which is also known as non-exertional heat stroke, and then there's exertional heat stroke. Now, the main differences between these two is that in exertional heat stroke, your patient population is often younger and otherwise healthy, meaning that these patients typically don't have any chronic medical conditions and they're not taking any medications. On the other hand, classic heat stroke usually happens in people who are older with chronic medical conditions. These people are often taking different medications that may interfere with the dissipation of heat from their body. So if I told you that this patient was 68 years old, was an alcoholic, and also had a history of polysubstance abuse, and that we found cocaine positive in his urine toxicology screen, then you probably guess that this guy is suffering from the classic version of heat stroke. So what are you gonna do next? Are you just gonna let this guy burn up, smolder, and turn into ashes? Well, probably not. There are many different ways to manage a patient with heat stroke but the most practical way would probably be ice packs and evaporative cooling. We're talking about spraying mists of water on the naked patient and having fans blow air by to facilitate the cooling. This way of cooling has actually been shown to reduce morbidity and mortality in patients with classic heat stroke. Other ways to cool people are with ice packs. You would put these ice packs in the person's groin, armpit, and neck, mostly because this is where the major blood vessels run close to the skin. Of course, you could always combine these two ways of cooling to get a faster and maybe more efficient results, but you also don't want to cool these patients too fast and cause hypothermia. You really want to stop cooling these patients when the temperature reaches somewhere between 38 and 39 degrees Celsius in order to reduce the overshoot and cause hypothermia. That's because just as hypothermia and heat stroke is bad for the body, so is hypothermia. 